I'm Bo Timken, Master Sake Sommelier. In this segment, we're talking about Daiginjo Sake. Somebody once asked me, what, what are the good versus the evils of boutique or specialized Daiginjo Sakes? Can one brewery make something better than the other? And does it have to be a small brewery? Can it be a big brewery making good sake? It comes down to the age old argument between macro versus micro. Sometimes big breweries get a bad knock. It's, it's a big brewery that they use machine automation and they don't can't make a handcrafted, beautiful, small, artisanal bottle of Daiginjo Sake. In most cases, I would argue that's sort of true, but there are small departments within big breweries that definitely do small brewing uh, techniques where they will do Daiginjos on a small scale using traditional equipment and using a more kind of prolonged, uh, more difficult kind of rigorous brewing schedule. But if you want to talk about handcrafted artisanal sakes, you have to look at jizake, which are small local breweries. And they're the ones who really craft the small batch sakes, where they're literally throwing, maybe making about 150 cases of one daiginjo sake. And these are totally in demand. And these guys sell these brew and brews year in and year out. They will sell out. And uh, within a brewery, they have a bunch of different daiginjos that they'll manufacture each year. Some for the common man, some for competition, some for sales only to local region as opposed to shipping their best sakes to Tokyo. Um, within every uh, jizake or small microbrewery, they definitely have a boutique feel because they make a boutique pro product. Some breweries have a mere four employees and their sakes are, are as artisanal as you can possibly get. But like I said, some major breweries also make small scale, small batch Daiginjo sake as well. At the end of the day, it's how it drinks to you. You're the champion of your own palate. It doesn't matter how it's made, it's how it tastes to you.